What's good, Simley? Welcome back. Happy Monday, April 8th. You can see the agenda before you. Uh, Check-ins again once a week, Zoom or email. Zoom will be 9.30 to 10.15 today, Wednesday, or Friday. That doesn't work because you're in another class, and obviously shoot me an email before the end of the week. We are talking about symbolic interaction. This was uh, a task that we had assigned last Friday, so we're running through what uh, some of your analysis was. Uh, again, we may not have the exact same thing. That doesn't necessarily mean uh, that your information is wrong. Be reminded, if you haven't already done so, your chapter one reading guide should have been submitted last week. So if you haven't done so, make sure to get that in. And this um, this key concepts of sociology and uh, theoretical perspectives grid should get turned in today when we're done. It should be turned in by uh, today. So make sure you have that uh, done. Uh, for the rest of the day and by Wednesday, you're gonna have another little practice with this, but I'll get to that in a little in a little bit. So symbolic interactionism, or symbolic interaction. I always say symbolic interactionism, that's not correct. Symbolic interaction. Again, we're looking at, sociologists are looking at how people respond to something, an image, an object. Um, you know, and what drives that? What is causing that reaction? Uh, and it should be, and it should be a change in response. What is causing the change in people's response to that? So we left off on Friday with these with these images here, right? We're going to analyze a societal change based on uh, what these are and what they symbolize. So we have the mask up sign, and then we have the help slow the spread sign. And one thing that will be difficult going through this for symbolic interaction uh, is that you're all going to have down something differently because you all had a different experience during the pandemic. Some of you, again, enjoyed being at home. Some of you hated being at home. <clears throat> for this perspective, we always begin our analysis with social action. Again, people's responses, people's responses to a symbol, to an object. So it's it's got to be social action. Just like if we're talking about conflict perspective, conflict perspective always begins with power. So if there's a, if there's a conflict, it's always going to be between two groups of people that are in want of the same power. And for functionalism, uh, we begin with functional integration. Change one component of society, the rest changes. Based on your experience for, uh, based on your experience from or during the pandemic, you're going to have different answers down here. Social action could have been I don't, happy, sad, depressed, ecstatic. You could have had, um, you know, feelings of isolation, or perhaps feelings of relaxation. It could have been a variety of different things. You could have responded to, um, you know, forced isolation. It all depends on how you how you went through that um, through that time period, through the the distance learning or the learning for home. Once we've got our social action done, we can start looking at why that happened. Why did we why did we feel sad or why did why were we ex, ex, uh, excited? Why did we uh, think of freedom and independence? Or perhaps why did we write down? failure, lack of academic success, unhappiness. Well, then we would go back and look at what changed. Functional integration. The part of society that changed is that, and again, we're looking at this from the school, or from a school perspective, schools changed from in-person, oops, to online. Change that font size there. There we go. You'll notice that there are a lot of similarities between what you wrote down in the box for functional integration, for functionalism, or for conflict, as well as for symbolic. Here's the thing. Just because you're analyzing a societal change from a different perspective doesn't mean that the societal change is different. We're just trying to figure out what the change is or what the cause of the change is, excuse me. We get down to culture. You know, if you were talking about celebrating your independence, celebrating, you know, re responding positively to this, 
It might be because, whoops, went too far. Because your culture, what you believe, what you value, what you celebrate is independence, is not having to be on a schedule, is not having to be uh, answerable to a bunch of adults telling you what to do and when to do it. Conversely, if you responded negatively to this, Maybe you like being around people. Maybe you like structure. Maybe you like having people tell you what to do because then you don't have to make the decision yourself. Perhaps your culture that what you wrote down is, I appreciate structure. I appreciate a schedule. I appreciate the mundane and just doing the same thing over and over and over again and not having choice. I'm, I'm an indecisive person. I like having leadership before me. Power. Again, it's kind of the same thing here. Parents and students versus teachers and administrators. Except where parents and students were fighting one another from a conflict perspective. Perhaps this power dynamic is teachers and administrators really aren't in the picture because you're at home doing your own thing on your own time. You may have just become group A. While teachers and administrators are helpless in getting you guys think getting you guys to get something done. And we go down to the social structure, right? It's going to be the more or less the exact same things. Because schools transitioned to online, you guys gained more independence, you guys gained more responsibility. You move up the social structure. Teachers, administrators, perhaps parents, because potentially they may have been at work. They move down the social structure. They don't have time to manage you. Again, you may not have the exact same things that I have down, and that doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, I'll look through your work when you submit it. And again, it should be submitted today. Uh, I'll look through it this week and make sure that we're all on the same page and kind of moving towards the same target. But that's, uh, that's step one. Make sure this document gets submitted into Schoology. And here's what you're working on for uh, Wednesday this week. And again, it's just another... Uh, another attempt to make sure that we understand these different perspectives and, and that analyzing societal change. So we have three different uh, theories to analyze societal change, right? Functionalism, conflict theory, symbolic interaction. You're going to analyze three different time periods of societal change. You're going to analyze from a functional perspective the change that occurred in American society during the 1920s when for the first time ever, a majority of Americans lived in the cities versus on a farm. Where they live, the home is clearly a function of society. Or potentially, you can look at this from a different route. If you're working in a city, or sorry, if you live in a city, that means you're undoubtedly working in a city. You're not a farmer in the city. So potentially... Jobs changed. Jobs perform a function in society as well. So you can look at this from a couple of different from different avenues. Uh, but you're going to analyze a societal change uh, beginning in the 1920s when for the first time ever, most Americans live in an urban environment versus a rural environment. And again, we start with uh, functional integration. Right? What component of society has changed based on this information? Don't need to do any research here. Don't need to whip out your history books or go to Wikipedia. I just told you, Americans for the first time ever are living in cities versus farms. Their home is a function of society. So how is that going to change their culture? How is that going to change power? How is that going to change social structure and social action? Then we're going to go to the 1960s for conflict perspective, and you're going to analyze a societal change that will occur during the civil rights movement. All right, so we're going to look at the 1960s, the civil rights movement for um, uh, Black Americans. Again, for the conflict perspective, we always begin with power. I would imagine we all have some background here on the civil rights movement. So again, we shouldn't have to do any research here, but begin with power. Who is in power? Who wants power? How is that then, as a result of the civil rights movement, how is that going to affect the social structure? How is that going to affect social action? What part of society will change? And then culture. 
How do our thoughts, beliefs, values, norms, how do those things change due to the conflict that occurred during the civil rights movement? And then finally, again, I was trying to find a, a symbol, an image that um, you guys could, could wrap your head around because based on my in-person classes, subway is either hit or miss. Some kids love it, some kids hate it. Um, so we're gonna analyze what has caused what has caused the change in reaction to Subway. For a long time, Subway used to be the creme de la creme of uh, you know, sandwich shops. It was the only sandwich shop, but that's neither here nor there. So what has caused this difference in reaction to Subway? For symbolic interaction, we always begin with social action. So you're gonna think about yourself. Why do you like it or why do you hate it? What has changed? What function has changed? Then go to the culture. Beliefs, thoughts, desires, values, norms, power, and then finally social structure. You should have this done by Wednesday. Go ahead and submit it. Uh, I'll do some review on Wednesday as well. Uh, but again, I want you guys to have your own ideas down because I'm going to, again, read these and make sure that we have uh, the right ideas. Uh, Wednesday and Friday this week, uh, after I re review the scenarios with you, Wednesday and Friday, we're going to watch the movie. You guys will watch it at home. There's a version of it in Schoology. You're going to watch the movie Selma and analyze the changes to society that occurred during the 1960s. And Selma is very much about the civil rights movement. Uh, but you'll have the rest of Wednesday and Friday. Um, and that should get finished by, check my schedule here. Yep, that should be finished by April 15th. So you'll have the weekend to watch that. A little bit more about that on Wednesday. Hope we're all doing well. Hope you had a great weekend. Welcome back to another week at Simley Online High School. I'll talk to you guys soon. And if you have any questions, shoot me an email. Go Spartans.